Here we are in Hebrews chapter 5 in verse number 5. We're going to start reading. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. As he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplication with strong cryings and tears unto him that was able to save him from death. That's Jesus praying in the garden of Gethsemane, saying, Not my will, thy will be done. And was heard in that he feared. God heard his prayer, but Jesus knows there's no way out of this if people are going to be saved. So he says, Not my will. Verse 8. Though he were a son, Friends, you could clear everything up in the church world. I don't care if it's Catholic, Methodist, Assembly of God, Baptist. You could clear up every denomination with that scripture right there. If you would follow Jesus that far. Though he, were a, he was the son of God and yet he learned what? Obedience. Obedience. That's where the will, our will is broken. We, we freely give it up. I'm not my own. We follow Jesus. Yet learned he obedience how? By the things which he suffered. It's not going to be an easy road, but it's going to be a wonderful road. And being made perfect, he became the author. How many loves the author of our salvation? Woo! He became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that joined the assemblies of God church. No, that's not what he said. But unto all them that. So is obedience optional? No. Mm -mm. No. I was the last, the last group I was talking to in the jail today was one man came out. He had a scar from the front of his head. I mean, that wide, right through there, all the way. Like they've had his whole head opened up all the way back down. And I, I would just talk to him, see if he had any, you know, if he's, I didn't know if he was mentally good or bad, but as I talked to him, I could tell he, he said, he saved it. He wouldn't, his mind was still up and running. And so the, 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 what we was dealing with was where the, the man comes to Jesus and says, I'll follow you, but let me go bury my father. That we we're, we're, was finishing up the last part of chapter nine of Luke. And, and the Lord said, let the dead bury the dead. It's like he's disrespectful. But what, what Jesus is saying to that man, and I'm looking at this guy, what Jesus is saying to that man is, your dad is dead. And there's nothing you can do for him going back. Wherever he went, he's there for eternity. But the people that's alive, if you can get to them with this gospel, if you'll do what I tell you to do, you might save some of them. Yeah, let the dead bear the dead. Come thou and follow me. He gives three instances. I'm just I'm talking to you about the last two. And the last one was kind of mean too. It says, this, this guy, he looks things over and he says, Jesus, in this, in this deal, it's not this guy coming to Christ, but the Lord says unto him, follow me. He said, yeah, I'll follow you, but I got to go home and tell everybody goodbye first. What, what's wrong with that? That seems like a normal thing because that's American culture. I asked him, I said, if the army gets you, where do you go? You go where they tell you. Well, you don't like it. They don't care. Yeah. And it's the same way in the walk with Christ. We follow Jesus, not our way. If our will gets in his way, friends, we, all we do is just start staggering around. And Jesus, he put a criteria on that that's so dangerous. He said, he that puts his hands to the plow and looks back. If you going home and bidding everybody goodbye means more than the lost souls of mankind, you're... You put your hand to this plow and look back. He said, you are not worthy of this kingdom. Woo! So that, I, I told that boy, I said, now what, what he's saying is that, that what he's dealing with right here is your will. And if, you, if you're willing to give your life over to him instead of dope Amen. or alcohol 
or, or whatever brought you to jail, being a thug, whatever. If you're willing to get loose from that, when you get out of here, you'll be free forever. And it's all by the choice of I'm going to follow Christ. Woo. So when he says right here, and being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Obey him. Just tell self, obedience is not optional. I owe him. And so because I owe him, I'm going to follow him. And he knows the right direction. <laughs> Woo. Called of God, a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Of whom we have many things to say. He said, man, I'd like to spend the whole night talking to you. But it's hard to be uttered. <laughs> You're chewing your gum. You went to sleep on me. <laughs> Something broke. <laughs> Have me like to whittle with a dull knife. <laughs> That's what he's saying. I'm trying to get something scraped off, but the knife is so done. It's a, the, the problem is, I want to tell you everything, but you don't want to hear it. <laughs> You're dull of hearing. Boy, <clears throat> I'm loving on you, aren't I? <clears throat> for when for the time you ought to be uh, teachers, you have neither one teach you again, <clears throat> which be the first principles of the oracles of God. It's a good thing you come in here, boy. Uh, your daughter has a place in my home from now on. <laughs> no more sky diving. <laughs> if you can't take care of her, I will. <laughs> I've just been waiting for you to get here. <laughs> and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. Everyone that useth milk is... Don't you just love to take your teeth in there to somebody that don't know they've been working on airplanes or something and you want to do a root canal on you? <laughs> How many's going to sign up for that? <laughs> Look at the uh-uhs out there. <laughs> well, he may know something, how to eat or something, but <clears throat> he's unskillful. <laughs> What's the problem? Everyone that uses milk is unskillful where? Get your Bible out and look it over. Every man that uses milk, if all you know is Jesus wept, you should have tears running down your face. In our Saturday morning, one guy, he said, the only scripture I know is Jesus wept. And I think Brother Falter said, well, if you're going to use that, at least tell us where it is in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a. Listen, there's nothing wrong, wrong with babies. One preacher said, when you got to part the whiskers to put the nipple in, there's a problem. <laughs> Verse number 14. But strong meat belong to them that are where? Full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Lord, thank you. How can we say thank you enough, Lord, for the precious friends we have here in this building today and those that went a jillion different directions yesterday and still here you are, Lord, to meet with us, to love on us to let us hear and see your word and your strength and your presence and your power. Take your word this evening, Lord, and just speak it to our hearts one more time. And we say thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 I've thought about <clears throat> a few times, I'm not going to do it tonight, so don't get scared, of getting all the people to come up here and just stand and let me sit down out there and just preach to you. <laughs> At the time you get through standing up here in the aisle, you'll say, Hey! <laughs> oh, my. No, I'm not going to do it because I love to talk to you about the Lord. Wow. So I want to talk to you about the thought. This is written to make us better. I love the Bible. What I learned from the Scripture was that this has never been used by God. Maybe by preachers, even maybe by me at the wrong time. But the Bible has never been used by God to beat people up. What is written in the Bible is written for our, that's what they said, our admonition. 
Admonition is not beating you up. Admonition is saying, you got your boots on backwards. Yeah. We had a little guy, had his spurs on and everything, and then boots. He had, he had the right boot on the left foot and the left boot on the right foot. You remember him? That little guy down there at Lazy H? And he's going along there. And <laughs> he's walking and his feet are like I, I, I want to pull him off of him, hit him so bad. He didn't, he didn't run around there like, I know something's wrong, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know? He got a cell phone about that long and about that wide hanging out his back pocket. <laughs> and he's about that tall. He got the world. I thought, buddy, you better get a rope on him now. He's going to be a maverick before he's 10 years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need to know the difference, don't we? <laughs> Absolutely. And so when you look at the Bible and you know that the Scripture is there to bring admonition, that's a good word. Would you say, the Lord wants to admonish me. He's not going to beat me up. And so these Scriptures like this, they dig around our root system, mine too. And they help us take steps to be better at what God has called us to do. Now, he talks about the problem here. It's in verse number 13. Everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. He is a babe. You know, as crazy as our world is, you don't need to stay a baby very long. There's mamas all over the place that just chunk them. They don't, they don't even want them when they're, when they're completely helpless. They, I mean, that child don't even know which one mama is, and they walk off. And the world is just went crazy. So you need to grow up fast spiritually. Don't, don't just waddle around and say, well, I just love being tended to. Get up there and, and help somebody else get up. And right then, you've already made a step that most people don't. You said, I'm not just a setter downer. I'm a getter upper. I'm going to hold my head back. I'm going to help my kids make it. I'm going to help my mama make it. I'm going to help my daddy make it. I'm going to pray for the folks at, church, at, at the work system. And all of a sudden, you're reaching out instead of it just being, oh, well, come, if, if you'll keep telling me up, I'll make it. No, you get up yourself. Yeah, that's what, the, that's what he said to us. Uh, we, we had a guy several years ago in our church. His name was Larry Ainsworth. He's kin to Connie and Nancy. A marriage. And he had a surgery. And he come home, and, and I, I was talking to him, and I mean, he was mad. He was madder than Pharaoh. I thought, what in the world's wrong with you? And so I went there. <laughs> I said, Larry, what's the matter? He said, they operated on the wrong leg. Can you imagine? Somehow they got his work mixed up with somebody else's. And you know, they, they line people up that's got the same problem. And, and they're doing like if they do a knee or whatever, they got, uh, they're doing everybody's right knee or whatever. Anyway, they got him in there, worked him over, and they got the wrong leg worked on. Yeah. Well, that's not eternal. But the people that's in hell that's been told they can live like the devil and go to heaven, think about what they're thinking. Said, why didn't they tell me? Why didn't, they, why didn't they say, you must live for God to go to heaven? Why didn't they say, you've got to get off of the milk long enough to get you some meat and go to children? You know, them children, you leave them alone very long, they'll bite your finger. It's kind of fun when they got them rubber guns, let them chow down on you. You let them get them teeth in there. Them little boogers, they'll reach out there and bite the end off your finger. You say, hey, hey, hey. you bring some not chicken, get him some steak. <laughs> yeah, chop it up real little, let him have some of that stuff. Won't be long, he'll be playing like Popeye. <laughs> I'm going forward. So the cause of the problem was unskillful. You say, well, big deal, unskillful. Well, friends, unskillful is unaffordable and unacceptable when we're dealing with such a precious commodity as eternal souls. So what's said, we got to be so up and about that we can get it done right. And the way you keep it right is just stay with the Bible. Don't tell somebody your opinion. I was talking to a guy one time and asking him something. He said, well, everybody's got an opinion. He said, they're just like elbows. Everybody's got some. <laughs> 
Brother, have you found that out? Pastor, no fair big springs. Everybody's got an opinion. But then there's the word of God. And that separates the sheep from the goats. And it gives you not just I think to what God said it this way. You take off down that road hungry. Lord, I'm just going to follow you. All of a sudden, you become a skillful leader because you're leading them by what the Bible says. Verse number 11 says what causes, what, what causes this problem of unskillfulness. It's brought on by, <clears throat> this is kind of sad, but it happens in every church from one time to another if you're not real careful. Seeing you're dull of hearing. Wow. I just listen to you so much I just don't want to hear you no more. And, and this is not just about preacher, but this is like dad talking to his son. Hey, I, I've been telling you about that, or mama talking to her daughter, or whatever, or the, the teacher, the Sunday school teacher, or the, it could be the pastor, whatever. It could be Brother Ross talking to the guys out there. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And he keeps telling them, said, this is where, after, after a while, you either got to say, get out or get in. I mean, he, he's had music people that, I mean, there's all kinds of talented, and then they're fooling around there, they're cussing and raising cane. They say, you're not on the team no more. <laughs> they swell up like a toad, get mad, ride him up. <laughs> if you're going to play the music, you're going to have to live the life. Don't you love it? So there's got to be a clearinghouse somewhere. It's brought on by lack of interest, dull of hearing, don't want to hear. Rather suck a bottle. Then be spiritually strong and say, I'm just going to take it on the end of the nose and do what God said. The author's screaming here. He's alarmed. In verse number 12, this is what alarms him. You've been with God long enough. You could be a teacher. Isn't that an incredible thing? And he's saying, you've been in church for X amount of months, weeks, years, whatever. You've been here long enough to grow up. I'll promise you, I, I've been around churches for since I was a kid. I've never seen no church, I mean anywhere I've been, that had as many teachers as this church has. Yeah. And that's because Connie said, she said, they can learn it. Yeah, I said, you're right, baby. If, if they want to, they can. And we got teachers all over the place. I mean, I remember when Brother Sister Leatherwood first come here, I wouldn't have turned my church over to him for a million dollars. And I, I felt like we was in safe hands when we walked off Wednesday. And Brother Rose has told me, said, did you know Brother Leatherwood led the Friday night men's meeting too? And yeah, I thought, Lord, I thank you. Yes! Yeah, if I walked off, friends, it shouldn't miss a beat. This has never been about Danny Williams or Sister Connie. This is about the Word of God, preaching truth, and living it like it says. Instead of getting dull, sharpen your knife. I'll furnish the razor. Yeah. I'll furnish the wind rock for you. This is it. It'll change him get a hold of that alarm what's the alarm for you could be teachers you should be teachers yeah so we're looking at our church here God let every one of us be so up and around that we're bringing people in Amen. Aaron's here today because of Jake Amen. yeah there we are proud to have you. We love you. We thank God for it being. I, I felt a kindred spirit when I walked in. I don't guess I've seen you since maybe over at Abilene. I thought, thank you, Lord. Wonderful. And the, the gentleman that was with us in the services there at the camp, Anthony. Yeah, he was up there because Jake said, hey, you need to go to camp. He'd never been to camp in his life. You know what his story was? He said, I've never been in anything like this in my whole life. I seen nobody, I never seen nobody love me like this love I've seen here. Woo, isn't that wonderful? We just said, oh, we don't know you, uh, whoever you are. No, -uh. I mean, he was brought in just like part of the family. Guess what? He gave one of the scriptures before I preached. Anthony did. And guess what it was? It took him all day to learn it. And all night. I'd go in there and he's still working on the scripture. It's Psalms 119 and verse number 11. Could we say it together? Have I that I might not sin against thee. I'll promise you, he's marked. Yeah, he's marked as long as he breathes air on this planet that the word of God, if I stay with it, it'll walk me away from sin 
never tired. And he's got it memorized. I told him after he got that down, I said, you got one bullet. If you want to carry a single shot, you can. But I love them. <laughs> he, he, I said, what's them deals they put all them? He said, I couldn't think of the word. I don't know why. He, that's a clip. But he said, I won't. There's a deal. Or what do they call that round thing? Uh, yeah, he said, I'm going to get a drum. I said, go, 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 go. Yeah, you can idle around with a single shot forever. Why not get past John 3, 16? Or Jesus wept. Why not get you a whole chapter out and learn it and put it so deep in your spirit you can walk in and say, Thus said the Lord. <laughs> that devil said, ah, I'm in trouble. He shoots in front of me and shoot behind me and them tracers are going out he going to hit he takes off running you know why because Jesus showed us how to use the gun it is written it is written yeah you say it whoa that changes things so most Sunday schools have shut down went bankrupt spiritually because no one wants or they're either incapable of teaching Make your mind up. I'm going to be used. I'm going to be somewhere. Brother Clay comes back from that walk, and he, he did what they told him to. He said, go to your pastor and tell him you want to do something. You want to start something. He come to, I said, well, come to my office. He come down there, and he said, I want to start a men's work. I said, that's great. But just know you started. You're the leader. I'm not, when, you, when you get tired of it, I'm not going to take it up. I'm doing all I can do. And I said, if you'll take it like that, we'll go. And I mean, he started our ministry. It's still going today. And now him and his precious wife passing a church over in Big Springs. And every time I see a big old smile comes over my face. And I'm saying, hallelujah, hallelujah. Why? You, you can throw the towel and say, I'll never do nothing. Or you can rise up and be accountable for God and say, I'm going to get me two, two of them things. <laughs> what are they? Give me two drums. <laughs> Whoop one off of that other one on that. <laughs> yeah, going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his mind. You can't take a novice, somebody that knows nothing about the Bible, and put them over a Bible study. And so I said, what you do, you got to say what the Bible says. And I mean, every time you come, you'd have him a tablet full of scriptures. <laughs> And it was good. I remember one of, the, one of the deals. He was tearing us up. And uh, he said, well, anybody got something to say? And Chris said, it looks like you don't want nobody to come back. <laughs> yeah, he had, you remember that, Chris? He had gunned down everything in us. We just got to clean it up and get our bit. Come on, brother. Don't quit carrying your God. <laughs> Woo! Though this gospel is written for admonition to lift us up. And so when it goes to <laughs> say, Lord, you got, it don't take no traces for that. You done hit me. Here I come going to the altar. I want to be the first one down there. Some, some of those times at the altar, I was the first one. I wanted to be there. I felt God tugging on my heart, man. I went around there, wept and cried. I was so caught up in the glory of God. I looked around and them kids just praying. Power of God on them, getting filled with the Holy Ghost. One of them mamas come to me and said, I never seen nothing like this. My son's been to two camps all over the place. He got the Holy Ghost tonight because y'all's kids prayed around him. Oh, Jason was right there. He's over there helping praying for them. He gets, Wow! Can you shout hallelujah? You can stay wimpy forever, or you can bow your neck and say, I'm going to the top one way or the other. God sent this to admonish me. He said, go forward. He said, be strong. Yes. Woo, glory. So I'm down to my second point. <laughs> Unskillfulness is the problem, but it can't be tolerated it can't be accepted. It's not affordable. If you're unskillful, get fix, fix it. Learn it. Anything, anything that's in the scripture, you can learn it. You can learn the way to live for God. The second, the second point's in chapter 6 and verse number 1. We're commissioned by God's word 
to grow up. We had a calf. I've told this story, and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but I just thought how important this is for us to get a handle on growth, on growing up. The babies come over on a Thursday. Of course, that's, I'm talking about Levi and Cotton. And I told him, I said, that calf is going to die. He's been three days without sucking. And I was day working stuff, just coming in, you know, most of the time an old cow lick her baby off, and he was licked. I thought he was doing good. But I got to watching him. He'd, he'd go around. He didn't know where the milk was. And I, I, I went over and started looking at him, and uh, them mares had got a hold of him, and, and I don't know, got a hold of the back of his head. He had some bloody spots on him and stuff. And I thought, you know what? That booger's never sucked. And he, he ain't got much longer to live if he makes it. So I said, y'all get that calf and take him up there, and I'll go get the cow. And uh, I don't know, how many here's ever milked? Yeah. A few, okay. A few of you, all right. If you know anything about milking, all kinds of stuff can happen. <laughs> like you get your bucket, and just as you get your milk ready, the cow just sticks her foot in the bucket. <laughs> And so you get that out, and by then you're angry, and so you sit back down there, and she kicks your, not only the bucket over, but she kicks the stool out from under you, and it'll kick you if you let her. <laughs> and so when, when, you're going, when you're going to milk a range cow, you don't want a novice to get ready to milk a range cow. <laughs> so Randy, Randy was around there, and he seen what I was driving in behind that gate, and he said, you better go get them kickers. He milked too. <laughs> I thought, man, we hadn't used them kickers since I was a kid. And you may not know what kickers are, but they go over their little chain and they got some deals on them like that. And it goes over right above the hock on that leg. And then it goes around on, on round and it goes over the other leg. Then you can pull that chain up through there and pull their legs together so they can't kick you. And I put them behind the gate, put the kickers on her. And so I'm going to let these boys milk her. And so uh, there's four downspouts on a cow's bag <laughs> and this cow's bag is strutted and what's in her has got to get in that calf or he's dead you can't just get milk and put in there he's got to have the colostrum and, and so them boys they're over there pulling on them downspouts <clears throat> And they ain't got no milk yet. And they, they look, they get up frustrated. They say, she ain't got no milk in her. Oh. <laughs> I, I'm just telling you, if you don't grow up, you're going to end up empty. All, all that baby needs is milk. And she got, they got somebody trying to get it that don't know how. And that's why I had them down there. If you don't ever learn nothing else from this, boys, you're going to learn to milk. So they went around, they, they would get, I said, well, just strip it out like you're getting the cream at the last. Well, that, that's getting, you know, just a drip. And uh, they wasn't under the spout where the glory comes out. <laughs> it's a, this cow ain't got no milk. I said, well, I want to show you something. And then I'm through. I want you to do it. I, I brought you here for a reason. And so I got a hold and I went to milking and I milked one of them. They had some Gatorade jugs. They milked that. We we tried to get the calf to suck, but he was so his his so uh, messed up. He wouldn't suck. He wouldn't swallow. He wouldn't do nothing. And I don't know if Shy brought that. Did you bring that little bottle over? Or they come got it. Yeah, that bottle saved his life because you can fill that bottle up, and it's got a tube on it that goes down past his throat right to his stomach. And uh, so I said, all we gotta do is get the milk out of her into the jug, and then we'll just I'll just hold his head up, and that we'll uh, uh, tube him, and then let that let that warm milk go right down in there. So, after I, I said, now I'm showing you, this, this, is, this, this is the one you said has no milk in it. Look at this. I milked the whole deal full. I said, you see that? There's some more milk in there. Did you get it? Man, they went back to work on them down spells. And we, <laughs> of course, they're watching. You know what? I'm, I'm reaching away up there and <laughs> pulling that. That cow's bag is so tight, you know, and the cow kind of hold her milk up for a little while uh, until she realized, you know, that, that 
I don't know what they, well, how they hold it anyway. In a little bit, it said come down. And uh, they start. oh, I, I've got a picture somewhere. I wish I had it. We showed the old cotton. He finally got him one of them little jugs full. And I mean, he, here he is. And we, I took a picture of him. It, <laughs> I got it probably 10 ounces. You know, we need a gallon or two. <laughs> Whoa, look at him. And I said, yeah, you done found something you never did before in your life. That's part of your growing up. Friends, you've got to milk on this gospel until it means something to you. You need the claustrum. I need the claustrum. I need the milk. I need the world. But one of these days, you're going to eat a steak out of the word of God. You're going to look at that and say, whoa, God talking to me. This ain't no play deal. It's just about me. This is about, whoa, I hear the commission coming on. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Wow! And the power of God begin to condescend on your life. It's not long we got that thing about half full. And I want you to know, we hemmed that little old baby up in the corner. He's fighting us like crazy now because he said, nobody cares. I don't care. I'm just going to die. We backed him up in the corner and held him up. And that, that milk started chugging. <laughs> next morning, the babies come back. They's better at milking that next day, man. <laughs> they got them little old jug, man. They pulled it in there. We, and that, that was all. That's gone, and it's up to Dan Dad from then on. So Friday... <clears throat> noon Friday evening Saturday morning Saturday noon Saturday evening I'm out there milking that cow and she don't like me and I'm getting where I don't like her very much but the hope of that cat is he's he's got to find his way he's never sucked nothing up till now Saturday evening Connie said why don't you quit I said because he has no chance unless I can keep him going and so I got up Easter Sunday morning, a year ago last Easter, <clears throat> milked that cow. And I, I saw something as I was milking. One of them downspouts had been nursed. And I said, buddy, this is your last time for me to milk. I hemmed him up in the corner, <laughs> give him that batch. And the next time he was making a living on his own. And friend, there is no greater joy than watch somebody get up off of the table of being a baby. And, and, and that's wonderful. Everybody's got to start somewhere. But then we to start walking it out. Yeah. What mama doesn't say when that little says, he's done started walking. Yeah, now he's climbing up on everything. Now he's trying to eat the stuff off the table. Boy, what do you say? Give him another steak. <laughs> Fill him up. Let him be happy. Let him go forward. Wow. And so the commission of the word here in chapter 6 and verse number 1 is leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ and let us do what? Go on to perfection. Not letting again the foundation repent from dead works of faith toward God. What he's saying, get right with God and don't go back to where you got that same problem over and over taking you down. Live the overcomer's walk. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 13. Well, we'll just read verse number 15. Ephesians 4, 15, but speaking the truth in love may do something. What? Grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Wow. The next time them boys milk, they'll go in there like a tiger and say, give me that bucket. <laughs> I know what to do now. That's what happens in your life. When you learn what to do, when you get sick, when you get down, when you get discouraged, when you get despondent, when you get lonely, you pull your book out, you fill yourself up on the word of God and you say, I'm living because Jesus is living in me. I don't feel it, but I faith it in the name of Jesus and I'm going on I'm going on from here the word skill the root word is skilla s-k-i-l-j-a it means ability to cut apart or separate or to rightly divide I thought that was pretty neat and that's why they call them skill saws <clears throat> because it comes from that word skilla the main definition, though, means a great ability to discern. Wow. Can you tell when your car is empty? <clears throat> it don't take Brother Messick to tell you your car is flat, does it? 
No. You go very far on your flat tire, you, you have to call him to tell you you got to have a new one. But you can tell when your tire is low. Yes. And so in our walk with Christ, you can start telling, hey, I'm, like Chris was saying, I, I, I looked at myself and I'm seeing, I, I'm not doing good. I'm, I'm fading. I'm not, I'm not progressing. I'm regressing. Chris, nobody can fix that, can they? That's got to come from the inside. I see that. I'm going to do something about it. Brother, Brother Ross, I mean, as much trouble as there is in ministry, it would be easier just to say, hey, take a hike. But your love of God and your love for people and the want to to see them turn, and maybe it's one in 20 or 30 or one in 50. But when one comes in like, hey, did you see what the Lord has done? How many Harleys does it take to get it stirred up? What? Whoa, and to see those kids praying in the Holy Ghost. Whoa, whoa. And so here we are. Like he said, speaking the truth in love may grow up into him where? In, in what? Man, you need a teacher. I can, I can pinch it. I may not be the best teacher there, but maybe I can do 50%. Amen. Yeah. I'll do what? You need somebody to cook, somebody to clean, somebody to... What, whatever. You need somebody to stand in? I mean, Brother Leather was not going to take the church over, but he did. I'm mad at y'all too. Whoever was here, how many was here Wednesday night? Without asking, Sister Leatherwood said all the people got over in one little row where he could see them. And I said, well, they won't do that for the fat preacher. <laughs> I'm already mad. <laughs> So come Wednesday night, y'all gonna have to get together where I'd spit on all of you one time. <laughs> Don't you love it? I, I thought that's so precious. Thank y'all for being here Wednesday night so much. God bless you for that. To so the word, we gotta have readiness to want, to want to go. Who, who, would, who would quote for me Psalms chapter one, one through three? It starts with blessed. But day and night, plenty that his leaf and shall prosper. Friends, those are not just words somebody thought would be neat. That's right out of the Bible. That's the first psalm for a reason. Look at the blessings that follow those that say, you know what? I'm just going to live out of the Bible. They, they used to say, y'all are too heavenly minded to be any worldly good. That's about as stupid as I ever heard. You, if, you, if you're straight enough, you'd be like the boy that done zoomed out of here. You know there's still something broke here to come after you. <laughs> Get right, stay right, say, Lord, I'm just going to hang around till my time comes. And I want to be growing up all the time. Every day we should be on the learning curve. If you don't know how to melt the scripture out, it's your turn now. Thirdly, we talked about the problems unskillful. The commission is to grow up in the word of God. And the third thing in verse number 14 is strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Isn't it wonderful when you see people say, you don't, you don't have to warm the bottle up for me no more. I, I can fry that steak if I have to or barbecue or whatever. Man, I'm coming out of here. Isn't that glorious? Strong meat belongs. I like the word belongs. This belongs to you. Why not just learn to take it and use it in your life? I mean, I, I'm just looking at testimonies where there's been trouble and, and you wonder what to do and you go to the Bible and all of a sudden there's an answer. And it's like, Yep, I know what to do now. I know what the Bible said. Yeah, that strong meat, it belongs. It belongs to you. It's yours for the taking. It belongs to them that are full of age. So take your medicine. Eat your meat. Get it out there and say, God, I want to bring that into my spirit. Sin must be crucified, not flaunted. Stop wearing a cross around your neck and get on it. Get on the cross with Christ. We are crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And that I li the life that I now live, I live it how? By the faith 
of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. So we get on there with Jesus and say, Lord, it kills me to let my flesh go, but bye. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, it's gone. Whoa, what I have is so much better. Yes, Kyle and I married when we were just kids. I'd never been away from home in my life. I mean, I love being home. I, I never had fights with my parents. Uh, I was 18, we married, and we walked out and never, never been back. I mean, we went back to visit stuff, but I mean, as far as that was being our home. But I, I love them. I love what mom and dad done for me. But it was time for us to start our own walk. And so look at your life like that, Lord. I've taken, I've taken my relationship with Christ. I love, I love what that brother said. If you don't make it, I'm going to make it. If you don't go, I'm going to go. Yeah. And so we, we got to look at it like that. God, I'm going to go. I'm going. I'm not giving up. I'm not going to throw, throw it away. I'm going forward. So the, the question is, can a man be saved and not be a Christian? Isn't that crazy? No. So what he's telling us here is these people have slipped off the edge of walking with God. That, that irreverent spirit of, I, I just don't want to hear it. That All that does is disband you from the things of the Lord. They that are hunger and thirst, what happens to them? They shall be filled. You stay empty long enough, you starve to death. There's a word in Spanish called flaco, and that means you're skinny. And if you're a skinny Christian spiritually, it's time to put some Lord on. <laughs> Go to eating that steak, man. Get strong in God. Make your mind up. The writer says in 1 Corinthians 15, verse number 34. Thank you, John, for chasing these scriptures down for us. Awake to righteousness and... Boy, somebody done got the spinach in there, hadn't they? <laughs> and sin not. Oh, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak that to your shame. If you're still living in open sin and willful sin, you are a broken vessel that won't make it unless you heal that up and say, God, I'm coming strong. I'm going to awake. I'm going to deal with this. And I'm going to be victorious. And so what's it doing? It's written to make us better. We got to muster up enough courage to become responsible for our own actions. I know you wasn't going to say a lot of amens, but thank you for staying in the church. <laughs> Here's the attack zone. Attacked the spirit of ignorance. Amen. The Lord said, my people die for lack of knowledge. Friends, if you know how it's incredible what you can do. And it doesn't matter what field, if it doesn't matter if it's in the medical field, in the mechanic field, in the oil field. Don't you love all them fields that brother that brother's talking about? In the cow field, in the sheep field, in the go <laughs> you could be in a hog farmer. If you know what to do, it everything is changed right there. If you don't know what to do, you are ignorant of that particular need. And so this here levels the ground we begin to, if, if there's a problem we're going to yeah go to the internet if you need to and look your book up if you can't find it <laughs> yeah all time Connie there's something broke she say well I'm going to look on the see what they got to say and man they'll come back and say this is this is what broke probably this is how to fix it isn't that crazy and uh, just look it up there and figure why not instead of being ignorant be smart say hey, I can do this I can do this by the power of God so I'm going to attack the spirit of ignorance and don't give yourself any relief until you've learned Jesus that's a lifetime but make up your mind I'm not giving self nothing I've got to tear this thing up enough that I know Jesus so good I'm not broken down by the, the flim flam of what's going on going forward. In Ezekiel chapter 3 and verse number 1, 1 through 3 we won't turn there but he just says eat the book. Yeah. Yeah. Eat it. Get it in there. Learn it. All I can see is Floyd Collins saying line up. <laughs> getting that board out he whooped the fire out of everyone and the ones that didn't want to take a whooping they left the class good enough but it wasn't long till we knew we knew chicken judging inside <laughs> inside and out and I'm closing with this in Matthew chapter 4 and verse number 4 
You got to make up your mind if you want chicken, pot, pie, or T-bone steak. If that's a hard choice for you, I don't even know if you're a Texan, let alone saved. Look, look what he says. But he answered and said, this is Jesus talking to our enemy. Man shall not live by bread alone, but how is he going to live? He's going to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. It doesn't matter if you're Jackie, Zachy's age or if you're way up in years like some of the other folks. <laughs> Brother Ross. <laughs> Brother Danny. <laughs> if you live, you got to live by this right here. Would you stay with me? Lord, we're coming to this altar tonight saying we know the Bible's not there to beat us up. We know it's there to grow us up. Lord, Touch us today and help us not to be unskillful. But Lord, to hone and hone and hone on our lives until we are a useful instrument in the hand of God Almighty. Lord, and we praise you for that now in the name of Jesus. Amen. These altars are open. If you've been unskillful somewhere, why not ask Jesus today? Let me grow up tonight in the name of Jesus. I'm sick of pot pie.